Good morning, everybody. We've almost made it through another week. Um, it is Thursday in my timeline. In your timeline, it might be Friday, it might be Saturday. Whenever you're watching this, let, just I'm, I'm just gonna let you know that I really appreciate you taking a look. It's, you know, it's, I enjoy doing this every morning. Sometimes I have something to complain about. Sometimes I don't. It's, it's just a matter of uh, when you're tuning in, I guess, or when I'm tuning in or, you know, that, however that goes. I started with Bones Coffee this week and I'm gonna end with it. This Crusader Cup, which is a scotch roux flavored coffee, butterscotch, chocolate, caramel with hints of nutty. It says so right there, hints of nutty. Who can argue with hints of nutty, you know? It's a wonderful, flavorful uh, cup of coffee. Bones Coffee does a lot of flavored coffees. They're not sweet coffees, but they are flavored and uh, they, they taste wonderful. A lot of them do. There are a couple that I've seen that I probably wouldn't try. There's a, a strawberry shortcake one that they do that just does not appeal to me, though I, Though I, or cheesecake, strawberry cheesecake, excuse me. I love cheesecakes and I love strawberries. I just think that would be a little much mm, for my coffee. Oh, but this is not. It's like butterscotch goes with chocolate, which goes with caramel, which goes with coffee because they're all kind of this toasty. Well, caramel and butterscotch are a very toasty flavor. Uh, and then chocolate's a very uh, sweet balancing go between with all of them. So it, it's just, Mm, and it just smells so nice. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do about 30, between 32 and 35, but yesterday ended up being 34. And today that's gonna be 37.5. Uh, I've got the Chemex out. This is my second to last Chemex paper, which is sad. So today I'm gonna have to go out and get more Chemex papers. It's sad, but it's amazing because that box lasted for a very long time with this Chemex. It was the first box I bought with this Chemex two years ago. So th those papers lasted this long and that's, that's pretty fantastic, I think. That's, that's, that's good value for coffee, you know? And then I've got all of my coffee apparatus anyway. So, or apparati, apparatus. So, um, you know, I can, I can move between things and I've been letting a couple things slide for a little while. I may have to bring back out the French press next week just, just to give it a little, give it a little shine, you know? But hey, let's, let's, uh, let's get this uh, mixed up. Oh, that's a nice, I think that's a nice fine grind for this Chemex. The wonderful, wonderful pour over. I think I will or 30, I got 37 grams. Since I've got 37 grams in here, I think I will try to max it out and give it a nice solid 500 grams of water. Just because, this stuff is just delicious. It's really great and it's surprising. You would be surprised how flavorful this cup is, I think. I mean, it, it's no surprise to me because I've had their line of coffee and their line of coffees are great. Um, Frankenbones is great. Um, they they have a, they had a Bavarian pretzel that was actually delicious. If you like pretzels, you know, they have a line of canned drinks now. I'm blanking on the names of them, but they, you go to their website, bonescoffee.com and they, uh, they've got, they've got a coffee lineup. It is getting chilly outside. What are we? 50. I almost did it. I almost, <laughs> for those that don't know. And there probably are quite a few of you. I used to work in radio. I graduated in college in 1999. I had an internship at a radio station uh, in 98, 99, cause that's what I ended up wanting to do after they told me, hey, you suck at music and I don't think you'd make a good music teacher, um, which is a whole nother line of fault that I won't get into. I, I, went, to, I went to college to get uh, a degree in uh, teaching. I wanted to be a music teacher. I wanted to teach uh, voice and I wanted to teach band and that kind of a thing. And um, they said, mm, you're gonna need a lot more work in order to get even the basic skill set, you know, to, to become a, a teacher. And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't really feel that. So I went to the next best thing. I went to a radio and TV production. And uh, the radio station at Capital University where I went to school was a fun little closet that broadcasted to one area of the campus. And, I, and it was the common area um, where they had uh, the cafeteria 
and they had several uh, offices, meeting rooms, and where you went to buy your overpriced books. So I went to, I went to college for that, and I, I, I got into a radio station internship, and I was very fortunate to be hired. Hello, Indy. What are you doing? <laughs> Fiddling around. Um, I got into an, uh, an internship and uh, filing papers for a salesperson. The sales department at that time, and I don't know if it'd be much different now or not. I wonder if everything's done electronically. That'd be interesting to find out. But um, at the time, it was all paper, all paper. And this is 99, 2000. I mean, you know, computers on a, I mean, they had computers. Some even had laptops but um, everything was still done by paper. We were still transmitting things via DAT tapes. There we go, I'll do about 90 grams of water in there. <laughs> He's having a fun time. Um, and um, so the, it was the most disorganized thing I'd ever seen in my life. Um, and I had a college dorm room. Uh, so my first charge was to fix a, a majority of people's uh, sales papers and organize them and file them, which I did. Look at that big bubble. That's a big bubble. All right, so we're gonna start our timer now. And I'm gonna start pouring and we're gonna see how this takes. And we'll take about 30 seconds off because that's um, about where I was. We'll do, we'll do about 300 to start with. Okay, about 300 to start with. Um, and I, uh, so I was doing that. I did that my first year. My second year, I got into the production part um, with one of my favorite people and my mentor uh, who worked there in, in the production, who was the production, uh, the head of production over there. Um, and that was a lot of fun. He and his uh, production assistant, they were both great people and they still are great people. They still, they're still in the industry. Um, it's still plugging along, doing a wonderful job. They're the voices of their stations basically now. Um, and uh, just, I, I it was just the most wild and wonderful time um, I had in radio was doing production and um, audio work and, and voiceover work and putting commercials together, taking pieces, making, making, uh, making basically art out of nothing, you know, um, the, 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 the fun and the cheer you, 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 cheers you would get from doing a job well done from the salesperson and then the client that they represent, you know, that, that, that was great. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, and then the program director said, Hey, I've got an opening overnight. Um, it wasn't overnight, it was seven, it was like 7 p.m. to uh, uh, like 11.30, midnight, I think maybe it was midnight. It's a syndicated show, and many of you probably know this show. It's called Delilah, and I'm, I, I poke fun at, at, at my time with Delilah. I, I, I say how terrible and horrible, and oh my God, it was just the worst thing, and that's, that's just not true. Um, Delilah, Delilah's it, it, love songs with Delilah. It was or Delilah after dark. It depends on your market. If it's a more of a Christian market, it's probably love songs with Delilah. Or she has like three shows uh, syndicated that play in that time slot for various um, various uh, uh, markets. Like Christian market would probably get more Christian themed songs about love and faith. Uh, a uh, top 40 would get more contemporary 80s, 90s uh, love songs, um, maybe some 70s, you know. And, and there was, a, there, I think there was another one too, probably for more like an urban, urban market. She, she was pretty big in, in the urban market as well. Um, she still is. She's still doing it, um, which, you know, good for her. And I think. I think the station that I the station that I worked at Sunny 95 had her for a very long time and then uh, for some reason I, I think so, something very tragic happened and I think she shut down production for a little while 
Um, I think it involved a suicide of, uh, of an adopted. She, she was very into adoption. She had adopted so many children and gave them home and love and all that stuff. And you know, like I said, I, I've made fun of my time working there, but in all honesty, she, she was really, she, she, was, she was very genuine. It was very, it was sappy love songs. It was sappy love songs. She would do dedications. She would air callers. The callers um, <laughs> were, oh my gosh, there were some that were, there were some that were funny and, you know, genuine. And then there are some that were just, oh my God, oh my gosh. Um, find Casey Kasem yelling about a, do a death, a dog death dedication, and you'll get some, and you'll get an idea of some of the, the, the things that got aired, um, on that show. But I did that. I did that for, I think I did that for two years, um, there, um, and then, uh, moved over to another radio station for two years and did uh, promotions over there. And that... That tore me to pieces. Um, that's the reason I have a lot of back problems and emotional scars. Ozzy Osbourne concert, 2001, at the Polaris Amphitheater. I, I'd never seen so many 60-year-old breasts in my life, and I hope I never see another one again. Toothless, uh, sun-dried, leather tanned, chain smoking, beer in each hand, and somehow still manages to lift their t-shirt up. I don't get it and I don't want to get it. Thank you. Anyhow, but those were good times. I got to see my first Aerosmith concert. I got to see, um, I got to see Sammy Hagar perform, David Lee Roth perform because they were doing that joint tour. Um, you know, th there were lots of concerts and, and lots of wrestling events that I got to go to and I, uh, you know, I'm very grateful for that, but it was a very difficult time uh, also. Um, and I was laid off from that job and then was rehired at Sunny uh, through their promotions department. Um, their promotions, uh, the, the promotions guy there was de is definitely still one of my, one of my greatest friends. Um, but that was also pretty rough because it was, even though it was a part-time job, at the time, um, you really had to, I mean, there were, they did a lot. They did, uh, they, they barely stopped, which is the point of promoting and marketing a radio station. You really don't stop. You want everybody to know, you know, and you want to present it in the best way possible. So I did that. And then at a certain point, they needed someone to fill in overnights because the overnight person left. Um, and I mean overnights as in uh, midnight to like 6 a.m. So I did a couple of those shifts and I'll tell you what, that's the, that's the worst thing ever to try to adjust to that stuff. And then I even, I, because I still did work during the day, um, I would only be able to go home and like sleep for like four hours and then come back in and then do do some of that work that I had to do, you know, and then, you know, turn around and maybe go to sleep, you know. I don't, it was not, oh, I, I don't know if you saw that or not. Um, it was, it was not ideal. Um, and, uh, you know, but that's, it, it is what it is, it's in the past. But I'm looking down here and I'm seeing that it's 51 degrees. And one of the things that we used to do, and it's too bad that it's gone now after that entire tirade, after that entire explanation of life that you really didn't need to hear about, but did anyway. When we would do the weather, we had several people that did the weather throughout the years. And uh, there was a point where uh, it stopped, but I, I, it was one of my favorite things, you know, because we were sunny 95, that kind of played into the weather. So, you know, we would say it's, uh, at the end of the weather report, you know, and this is John Weatherby, who was a person that did weather for us. His last name was Weatherby, which, you know, it seems like you're destined to do weather. And then we would say, thanks, John. It's 85 degrees at the station where it's always sunny and 95. And I think that that was probably the most endearing thing uh, that we did promotions wise on the air for sunny was that we, we would always say it's always, and it's, you know, at the, at the station where it's always sunny in 95. And I, I think that, that that's endearing. I think that's cute. I think it fits the market because it's a, it's an adult contemporary station. Uh, the target market is women 24 to, to 50. 
something like that. That's the they have they have uh, segmented uh, targeted markets like like men from like eighteen to to forty. You know they, they, that's that kind of a thing where they where they directly try to target their marketing and they spend millions of dollars to directly target their marketing at a specific group of people in uh, basically the Columbus metropolitan area. Um, and they also do online stuff now, but basically it's just for the Columbus market. And uh, it's just, it's amazing what sets you off, the things that you see. Uh, you just look at something and you're like, oh my God, that's hilarious. That brings back a memory. Um, and that memory is, it's always sunny in 95. And, and then they, they would, you know, and then we would talk about, continue, now would be about the time we would start talking, well, we would, I think we would start talking about continuous Christmas music right now. They've probably got it labeled as something different. Every five years, they like to reinvent the wheel um, and watch people complain about it for the first two weeks, and then it drops off because everybody's stopped caring because now it's just background noise. So radio is funny, man. Um, Matt would tell you that it was terrible for me because they treated me like garbage, um, and they did. They did treat me terribly, but I was willing to do that because I knew the end result could be that I would continue to produce commercials and create, you know, creating's a big part of what I love to do. And, you know, I, it's, it's not like that I like to talk. I don't want to be the center of things, which is why I, I really, it, it's, it, it, was, it was the time but uh, uh, it was the, the time slot, but it was also the fact that I really didn't like being the center of attention. I wanted to be the person pushing the buttons and making the, the center of te attention sound good. But I did a lot of producing of live events when the DJs were out live. I'd be back at the station behind the board, pushing the buttons, making the commercials go, making the songs go, making all the drops go. I would back up produce the morning show, which was a big part. It's actually still a big part of Columbus, but you know, a big part of the station was the morning show. It's where they could they could uh, make the rates for the commercials higher for the drive time and the listen listenership. So, but yeah. It, uh, uh, and I like creating, and I'm really grateful for the time that I had at that station, even though they did treat me like garbage, but I didn't let it get to me because I loved the majority of the things that I did, you know, and producing, producing is so much fun, you know, you make it all, you make it all sound seamless, even though behind the scenes, you're pushing a hundred buttons. Uh, you know, a minute, you know, uh, but, but it's to, to the people out there, it just sounds like one continuous production is going on and there's no interruptions or anything like that. It was even worse back in the day when stuff was less computer based. When I started in radio, they were still using CDs in CD carts and in cart machines. So you'd slide it in and then you, it would be controlled by the board. Hang on. I gotta, I gotta drink this coffee. This is why you guys tuned in, and this is why I started started the, the whole coffee thing. Mm. Oh, it's so good. It's so tasty. This Crusader cup, you should definitely get that. There's just so much going on. The caramel is just such a, I mean, the caramel and the, and the chocolate just kind of meld together into a wonderful, almost um, unsweetened, it's almost like an unsweetened Werther's original, which it's hard to contemplate because Werther's originals are so sweet but I don't know it just it just makes it just makes it an entirely different thing and uh with the with the delicious coffee mm. oh it's so good but <clears throat> there was a time uh and, and as I said before we were still doing things in little dat tapes um NBC4 during sweeps would put all of their stuff for sweeps week which is when they were when um the ratings were being watched the hardest, basically, for each station. So they would do all of their hard-hitting stuff, all of their big uh, shows, all of their premieres, or all of their finales, or you know, all of the news is hard-hitting, and all of the the uh, game shows are must-sees. You know, so. <clears throat> 
uh, they didn't do reruns. They tried not to do reruns during that time period. So they, uh, so they would do these uh, hard hitting, deep voiced commercials and they would still send it. Well, I would have to go over and pick them up uh, uh, on NBC4 or ABC6 or, you know, or, or UPN at the time um, on little DAT tapes that were this big and they would go on a little machine. And then they were also still sending reel to reel uh, two track commercials on those big reels that we would still, we would unwind and wind up. Yellow Thunder. Yellow Thunder used to be an actual helicopter during uh, in the 90s and through most of the uh, through the mid the mid 2000s um, yellow thunder was an actual helicopter that they would refuel and take up and then um <clears throat> bill sergeant bill taylor sergeant bill taylor uh was the voice of that helicopter uh nine times out of ten and um he did the christmas um, Christmas Eve, uh, they would play a reel to reel that, uh, Sergeant Bill did, um, where he was tracking Santa. And I remember playing that on a Christmas Eve where Sergeant Bill Taylor was, was, uh, was tracking Santa in, in yellow thunder at night. <laughs> Such a magical freaking time, man. We will never ever have that back in radio. That's that's all gone. All that magic, unfortunately, because of uh, computers and uh, voice tracking and that kind of nonsense. You know, people in Iowa can voice track for Columbus stations now. So you know, the, the radio stations don't necessarily need someone here. They can have, uh, they can hire somebody on the cheap to edit a show together that's recorded in Iowa and then put in the traffic things, you know, in a, re in a recording, you know, rather than doing it live. Because all of that was done live. We would go over, we'd push a mic button, we'd say, Sergeant Bill, you there? And then come back and then he'd be on his headset in the, in yellow thunder, looking down, uh, watching the traffic flow. And then he'd come back with, you know, I'm here. Uh, you ready to go? Or are you ready to tape? Or are you ready to, ready to do? And it was just, it was magic. And it was just so much being done at once. And that just doesn't happen anymore. Before I was laid off in 2008, that magic was going away. Um, everything was computerized. So, and there were people that were voice tracking their shows. And then, because a lot, of, unless, unless they had some kind of a promotion that was live or some kind of game that they were doing, on-air game they were doing, a lot of it was just voice tracked. You know, so, which is disappointing, but that's what progress is, I guess. <sighs> now I'm depressed. Wait a minute. Ah, oh, okay. I'm better now. Thank you for listening to me rant. I really appreciate it. Reliving my radio days, thinking about it in my head. There were some wonderful, beautiful times, and there were some dark, deep, horrible, depressing angry times in radio that I had. And maybe I'll bring that up sometime. We'll see y'all later. Have a great weekend and we'll talk to you on Tuesday. I hope. Bye.